Hi everyone, what's up? Today I want to show you how you can derive the law of cosines using vectors. So this is going to be a really interesting application of the dots product and how, you know, if you have a specific setup of three vectors, well, you can come up with this law of cosines, okay? Now, using this notation, uh, A, B, and C are just the segments, the legs of a triangle, but I want to show you that this is the, that if you use vectors to create a triangle, this law of cosines still works, okay? So yeah, let me just give you the entire, yeah, let me just give you the derivation. So say you have two vectors, uh, I'm gonna call one of them, uh, I'm gonna call this one A, and uh, say you also have V, and that's just B, not V, so B, and the angle between them is gonna be theta. Then we can say that there's gonna be a third vector, which will go uh, from B's head all the way to the other head of A, and I'm gonna call this vector, uh, I'm just gonna call it C, okay? just to keep up with the ABC notation. So now I wanna show you that even though these kind of legs are vectors, this law of cosines still holds for the magnitudes of these vectors, okay? When we write the law of cosines using this notation, A, B, and C, A, B, and C are our lengths, they are magnitudes. And in this case, we're gonna use the magnitudes of A, B, and C, okay? Of capital of B, A, B, and C, okay? So yeah, let me just uh, start off. So. This is really, this is just gonna be direct proof, pretty much. If we wanna find the magnitude, so here's, you know, the reason you need to use. Say that for any specific reason, you are interested in the magnitude of C, okay? Well, hopefully something uh, that you know about that product is that if you wanna, uh, you know, if you wanna somehow have a tool in which you can measure the magnitude of a vector, you can take, you can take the dot product of that vector with itself. So say that you're interested in the magnitude uh, of, I don't know, I don't wanna use A. I'm actually gonna use, cause I'm already using A here. I'm just gonna use, say that you have a vector V and you wanna find its magnitude. One way in which you can get close to its magnitude is by just finding the norm squared of this vector, which we know is just gonna be V dot V, okay? Uh, we know this is just gonna be V dot V because the cosine, so this would be, V dot V would be equal to the, the magnitude of V times the magnitude of V times cosine of theta where theta is the angle between V and V, but that angle is gonna be zero because they're the same vector. So they're, it's a, the same vector, the same vector on top of each other, on top of, yeah, pretty much. Yeah, you have two vectors on top of each other. They have the same length, same direction. They're the same vector. So this is something that holds. This is an idea that holds. And I wanna write this using C, okay? So I'm just gonna say that over here, we're gonna have, uh, yeah, I'm gonna say the following. The magnitude of square of C is going to be equal to C dot C, okay? So vector C dot vector C, okay? Now, is there any way we can rewrite C? Yes, there is. Over here, using this triangle, we have the relationship between A, B, and C. So uh, we know that B plus C, well, if we just go from here, we move here, and then we go up here, this is the same as just traveling A. So we know B plus C is equal to A, okay? This is the relationship between the three vectors, which means that, well, C is just simply gonna be the difference between A and B, okay? So A minus V, minus B, not V. I'm saying V, this is really B, okay? Um, so now, instead of writing C dot C, well, we can actually say that this will be equal to uh, vector A minus vector B dot vector A minus vector B, okay? So now you might be wondering, well, how do you take the dot product of a subtraction or a difference between two vectors? Well, there's actually a really nice property about the dot product and that, and it is that, well, you can actually just treat these, these two vectors as if they were, you know, just common numbers. So if this was say X minus 10 and this was Y plus 12, you would just simply foil these two factors. So you would do A times A minus B times minus B and then minus B times A and you, you would just foil, okay? We can actually foil using the dot products, okay? So this would be the same as A dot A. So let me actually just make a couple arrows over here so you know what's going on. So over here, this is gonna be A dot A. Instead of multiplying, see these are vectors, you can't really multiply two vectors as you multiply numbers. So we're just gonna take the dot product so this is gonna be a dot a, so this will be a dot a, 
And I'm actually going to do that in the next line because I want to house everything in the same line. So let me do that uh, down here, I think. Yeah, that would be a nice spot. So we have A.A. .A. And now we're going to take the that product between A and the other vector over here, which is going to be V, okay, B. And it's going to be minus B, actually. So we know we're going to have a negative in front, and this is going to be A dot B. And now you can just do the same thing with the other vector B that we have. So you're just going to do uh, B dot A minus B dot A, and then minus B dot minus B. So once again, this goes here. Hopefully you can see the arrows, and they give you some intuition into what we just did. So this is, again, going to be minus a dot b if you just simply uh so we already did a we already have a a now we have a minus b a dot minus b minus b dot a which is the second the second term of this third term actually and then we're just gonna do minus b dot minus b that's gonna be plus b dot b okay so this is what we get now this is very nice because hopefully you can see by now how you can get the law of cosines uh, from these terms. So a dot a, based on this idea over here, we know a dot a is going to be the magnitude. So I'm going to do that over here. It's going to be the magnitude squared of a. So it's just going to be a squared. Over here, we also have b dot b. We know, again, that's going to be the magnitude, the norm of b squared. And over here, we have the same term, which is just going to be minus 2 a dot b and you already know what a dot b is we know this is just going to be the you know the definition of the dot product so you can just simply write this as norm squared of a uh, b squared minus and if you don't expand this out well you're just going to get 2 a b times cosine theta and we know that theta that theta is kind of too big. <laughs> there we go. So theta, we know, is going to be the angle between A and B, okay? Based on the setup we created on the left-hand side. And now, well, this is the exact same law of cosines, but for vectors, okay? Uh, I think oh, hopefully this gives you some idea into how you can treat the legs of a triangle or just simply magnitudes in space. They're pretty much a vectors. If you see them based on how you can jump from a, B, and C as lengths, or as just simply legs of a triangle, and how it's the same idea using vectors, okay? There's an equivalence between using vectors and using lengths or, you know, typical geometrical lengths, okay? Hopefully, I think that's a very interesting equivalence, so it's a very interesting thing to see. So yeah, you know, I think this is very nice, and hopefully this gives you, you know, this, this was fun. <laughs> so yeah, that's been the entire thing. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed it, and see you in the next one. Bye.